After nearly seven years of silence, construction on the Jeddah Tower roared back to life. Concrete is pouring again, cranes are climbing, a dream once frozen in the desert heat is finally moving upward. But what's really happening on site in 2026? Who's leading this comeback? And will this be the year we finally learn if the world's first one-kilometer tower can actually be built? Today, we'll cut through the hype, revealing the truth behind the headlines, the engineering pushing this project forward, and the deeper reason why this tower matters more than ever. The story began in 2013, when plans were unveiled for a skyscraper that would break every record on Earth. Designed by Adrian Smith and Gordon Gill, the same team behind Dubai's Burj Khalifa, the Jeddah Tower was meant to rise past the clouds, over 1,000 metres tall. By 2018, workers had completed more than 60 floors. The reinforced concrete core pierced the desert skyline, a symbol of Saudi Arabia's new era of ambition. Then, everything stopped. Political turmoil, financial freezes, and changing priorities brought the project to a halt. The cranes came down, the site emptied, and the unfinished skeletons stood there for years, a reminder that even unlimited vision can run into reality. For nearly a decade, Jeddah Tower became a rumour. But in 2023, the Jeddah Economic Company quietly issued new tenders. By early 2025, trucks were back, workers were welding, and the dream was alive again. The question now isn't whether it will rise again, it's how high and how fast. By mid-2025, the tower's core had surpassed 65 floors. By autumn, it reached the 70th, nearly one-third of its intended height. Fresh contracts were signed. Kone secured the elevator and escalator systems, signalling serious vertical planning was underway. The price tag, however, ballooned. Estimates for the next construction phase came in near 100 billion rials, around 26 billion US dollars. So, as 2026 begins, Jeddah Tower stands at a crossroads. Structure rising, crews mobilized, but an immense amount of work left to do, with an official completion goal of 2028. To transform plans into progress, Turner International was brought in as project manager, the same firm that oversaw the Burj Khalifa. Their job? Synchronize dozens of contractors, manage budgets in the billions, and ensure this project doesn't stall again. They're joined by the Saudi Bin Laden Group, structural engineers at Thornton Tomasetti, and environmental consultants like Langen International. Each brings global expertise, but success depends on coordination, something the tower lacked before. 2026 is the year that coordination will be tested. Every schedule, shipment and pour must line up perfectly, because one delay at this scale can ripple through the entire skyline. At full height, Jeddah Tower will stretch beyond one kilometre, surpassing Burj Khalifa by roughly 170 metres. Its 150 plus floors will include luxury apartments, offices, a Four Seasons hotel, retail and the world's highest observation deck, a space so tall it could host its own weather. The building's design is aerodynamic, three wings tapering into a single spire to reduce wind drag and stabilise its core. The shape isn't just beautiful, it's essential for survival at that altitude. Below ground, foundations plunge deep into coral rock, built to resist both saltwater corrosion and desert heat. The base is massive enough to distribute thousands of tonnes of weight across unstable soil an invisible structure as complex as the tower above it. 
Even the glass facade is engineered for extremes. Reflective enough to limit heat, strong enough to endure hurricane-level gusts. Every system, from elevators to plumbing, stretches the limits of existing technology. And in 2026, those systems will finally be put to the test. This year, Jeddah Tower moves from symbolic construction to measurable progress. The difference is in rhythm, how consistently each floor rises, how tightly the teams stay aligned. Structural momentum crews must maintain a steady cycle of pouring and curing concrete to keep the climb continuous. Any lapse in pace could push the schedule months behind. Facade and envelope. This is when prototype panels should appear on site. Once approved, full-scale installation begins, transforming the tower from raw concrete to shimmering glass. Elevator core integration. With Kone on board, shafts and guide rails are being prepared for the next generation of high-speed lifts, designed to travel over 10 meters per second. Delays here would ripple through the entire interior schedule. Mechanical, electrical and plumbing core systems must now weave into place. Water, power, ventilation and safety lines that extend hundreds of meters. They form the tower's unseen arteries. Crane and hoist repositioning. As the building grows, cranes must climb with it. Each relocation is a complex ballet between safety, precision and timing. If all of these targets stay on track through 2026, the 2028 finish remains possible. But every month of lost rhythm adds weight to the risk column. The next stretch is where the laws of physics push back hardest. Wind loads at 1,000 metres are punishing, capable of swaying the structure by metres in either direction. To counter this, engineers will install tuned dampers and adjust stiffness as the tower climbs. Concrete pumping becomes an art form at this height. High-pressure systems must push material hundreds of metres upward without air pockets or separation. Each pour must be timed perfectly, especially as temperatures rise across the Red Sea coast. Elevator systems are another frontier. Traditional steel cables become too heavy at this distance, so new composite materials and multi-stage sky lobby transfers will bridge the climb. Then comes logistics. Glass panels, structural steel and custom fixtures arrive from multiple countries. Shipping delays, customs holdups or fabrication errors can slow the project more than weather ever could. And even when components arrive, they must fit precisely. At hundreds of metres above ground, a misalignment of just a few millimetres can cause cascading problems for the floors above. 2026 is where those details determine destiny. Money has always been the heartbeat of this project and its greatest risk. The restart came with fresh funding commitments and renewed government backing under Saudi Vision 2030, the national plan to diversify the economy and showcase innovation. Prince Al-Walid bin Talal reaffirmed his intent to see it completed, declaring, we are back. Still, costs remain fluid. Every stage depends on global steel prices, shipping costs and energy rates. The tower's budget is enormous, but the margin for error is razor thin. 2026 will test not only engineering endurance, but financial discipline. Whether investors can stay confident through two more years of massive expenditure. If they can, the payoff is equally massive. Tourism branding and global prestige that extend far beyond the tower itself. Every mega project has a pivot year, the one that decides its fate. For Jeddah Tower, that year is 2026. If the pace holds, this becomes the year of credibility. It's when the tower shifts from maybe to inevitable. But if the schedule slips again, faith evaporates. Momentum is fragile. 
and once the world stops watching, restarting becomes twice as hard. This is the stretch where every floor counts, where each crane move and contract approval feeds into a single question. Is this truly the future's tallest tower, or another monument to halted ambition? By the end of 2026, the truth will be visible. We'll know whether cranes are climbing faster, whether facade panels shimmer in the desert sun, and whether the world's tallest structure is truly on pace for completion. This year will reveal more than progress. It will reveal commitment. Because building a one-kilometer tower isn't just about concrete and steel. It's about endurance. The willingness to keep going when most would give up. I'll be tracking every update, every new floor, contract and milestone, separating fact from fiction as this skyscraper continues its rise. If you want to follow the world's tallest story as it unfolds, make sure you're subscribed. Now, tell me in the comments. By December 2026, how many floors do you think will be complete? And do you believe Jeddah Tower will finally pierce the clouds before 2028? Let's find out together.